Welcome to a new episode of Weapon Spotlight. In this video, we'll learn all about artillery. If you want to turn huge swaths of the map into a field of craters without getting too distracted from your morning coffee, this is the weapon category for you. You say category, but there's just one weapon in it. Rocket mortars. So yeah, hope you like rocket mortars. Well, they are fantastic. Let's get into it. Rocket mortars are an indirect fire weapon, meaning you don't need a direct line of sight on your target. You just launch a bunch of rockets into the air and let them rain down on the enemy. They come in three variations, costing 8, 10, and 12 energy, respectively. The heavier the rocket mortar is, the more rockets it fires, and the more damage its full salvo deals. Sounds neat, and when you say, just let them rain down… Yeah, those rockets deal massive AoE damage. While they're not the most precise, you can definitely blast several mechs apart all at once, if you pick your targets well. So it's like loading a bunch of RPGs into a catapult? Well, yes, but also no. Each rocket in a rocket mortar has a much, much bigger boom. Alright, that sounds like quite a handy crowd clear. How far can you shoot these things? Rocket mortars can fire right across most maps. With a range of 225 meters, it won't be easy to hide. And like I said, you don't need a direct line of sight to the target either, which means you can start bashing enemy mechs as soon as they reveal themselves. It works great for protecting beacons. That sounds fantastic, but there's got to be a catch. I mean, it sounds like the enemy won't even know what hit them. Well, actually, they will. Enemies get a notification about incoming artillery, so still have a chance to dash for cover. Or just walk quickly to cover. If you're actually firing from across the map, those rockets take their sweet time reaching their target. Right. Here come the nuances. How many times have I told myself not to get mesmerized by, well, anything? So do rocket mortars have any other drawbacks? The most obvious issue is the reload time, which is even longer than a long arms. Once you've fired both mortars, you'll be twiddling your thumbs for almost 15 seconds. So time those salvos well. Well, maybe if you fire them all at once. If I've got two rocket mortar pods, couldn't I fire the first as a decoy, getting the enemy to burn all their defensive abilities? I could just follow up with the second salvo. That's a cruel trick to play, but it can absolutely work. Except, well, okay. It'll work as long as they haven't exploited the rocket mortar's other major weakness. Is it roofs? It's roofs, yeah. If they hide under something, they can completely avoid most, if not all, of the damage. Even only partial cover will negate a lot of your damage, since half the rockets will hit a cliff or something and waste their damage potential. And you might not even be able to see your targets, so you just have to know the map to figure out why you aren't dealing any damage. Yeah, that's tricky, all right. You actually better hope you can't see your targets. Rocket mortars have one final fatal flaw. Minimum range. Oh crap, like javelin racks? Worse. The minimum range for rocket mortars is a whopping 45 meters before implants, which is almost up to medium range combat. What do you do if someone gets that close? You die, most likely. Rely on help from your teammates. Maybe use defensive abilities to delay the enemy for a bit. Dash to run away. You could pair a short-range weapon with a rocket mortar, so you're not completely helpless. But if someone gets that close to you, more than likely they'll still outgun you. And the rest of the time, you'll only have one mortar to do actual work on the battlefield. Yeah, you'll be half as good at both roles that way. Not too much point in that. Otherwise, though, I can think of a lot of situations where rocket mortars are absolutely perfect weapons. Like what? Well, when you're on a small map where there are guaranteed choke points, both teams will be clustered around the little cover available, and you can target the places where people are going to be, even if they're not your original target. That's a good one, yeah. But be sure those choke points aren't covered from above. Site 313 and Skyship 11 both have really good choke points where enemies aren't always gathered, but they're all under solid roofing and hard to get at with a mortar barrage. True. That actually gets into my second idea. Wide open maps where most of the fighting goes on at long range. A lot of people will bring sniper weapons and they'll be clustered around the few bits of cover they can find. But you can force them out, exposing them to your teammates. Or you can just blow them up if they aren't willing to run. Yeah, lots of good deathmatch maps work that way. It's a useful tactic there. Okay, well, I guess this is it regarding the artillery weapons for now. Yeah, thank you to everyone who watched this guide. Tell us in the comments about the mechs you equip with mortars and how successful your approach is. Also, hit the like and subscribe buttons to be notified when the new guide appears on our channel. Goodbye. Later.